Chapter eight, the creation of the universe. There are 125 billion trillion trillion atoms in the earth. How many stars are there in the universe? 125 billion trillion trillion. Same number as atoms in the earth. As above, so below. The earth is a model of the universe that God presents to us to enable us to comprehend the universe and its stars. For the earth, the atoms are its stars. How big is the universe? We can find the answer by asking, how big is the earth? And what is its proportion of size in relation to the atom? In other words, how much bigger than the atom is the earth? The atom is one fourth millionth of an inch across, which in miles is four trillionths. The earth is 7,900 miles across. The proportion of size is 7,900 divided by four trillions, which equals 2,000 trillion. That means the earth is 2,000 trillion times bigger than the atom. What this tells us, according to the law, is that the universe is 2,000 trillion times bigger than the solar system. So its size is 2,000 trillion times 7,900 million, which equals 16 trillion trillion. The universe is 16 trillion trillion miles across and has 125 billion trillion trillion stars. The earth is 7,900 miles across and has 125 billion trillion trillion atoms. The creation of the universe. We must ignore the lies of modern scientists if we are to discover the truth about the creation of the universe. They say that 4.5 billion years ago, there was a huge kaboom, a big bang. Our ancestors never mentioned any bang, big or small. Ignore the bang and consider this. The law of creation is the law of cycles, which says the end point is the same as the beginning point and the cycle repeats. A flower starts with the seed and ends with the seed so that it may start again and continue forever. The cycle starts with the electron and ends with the universe. It ends where it began so that it may start again and continue without beginning and without end. If the earth is a mini universe, it is not intuitive to think that it was a full universe at the beginning. And if the electron is a mini earth, could it not have been a full earth also? If the universe is made of star systems and star systems are made of atoms, does that not say atoms are the original star systems of the beginning? The present universe originated from the universe of the past and that one from the one before. There never was a time when a universe did not exist. Just as people are born of people and flowers come from flowers, so also do universes come from universes. There is no beginning and no end. It has always been and ever shall be. Our ancestors teach the story of creation as follows. Long, long ago, the earth was a full-size universe. Its present atoms were the stars of that universe. And they were 125 billion trillion trillion in number, filling space farther than the eye could see, stretching across that universe, which was 16 trillion trillion miles across. Just like every flower grows in its season and reaches full maturity, the universe has its season also, called its duration. At the end, it reaches full maturity. When that universe of our ancestors reached full maturity, it was time for it to give birth to a new universe to continue the cycle of creation. Just as a flower folds itself into a tiny seed, which later unfolds into a full-fledged flower, so did the previous universe fold into a single earth. God, whose mind is infinite and to whom star systems are as atoms in size, gathered all these stars into a single sphere, which became our earth. The stars of that entire previous universe became the atoms of the new earth. That is how the first earth of a new universe is always created. Then new stars filled the space around that earth and our universe came into being. There is no big bang in the creation of a new universe, just as there is none in the growth of a flower. When it is time to create a new universe, God simply expands his mind until the whole universe appears to be the size of a single earth. At that point, the stars appear to be the atoms, the size of atoms. The whole universe becomes one earth 
and new stars are created all around it. Not only are the atoms of our earth identical to star systems, but they were actually the star systems of that universe of our ancestors. Our electrons were their planets on which they lived. When the purpose of that universe was completed, the minds of our ancestors expanded to an unimaginable extent, such that they could see the entire universe as a single sphere the size of our earth. That sphere became our earth and our ancestors made themselves new bodies from its substance. They became its first inhabitants. They are the original people called the first gods. We, as black people, are their descendants. Our lineage stretches all the way back to them. That is the story of how they created our universe. Here's a question to consider. If all the stars of the previous universe are used to form the first earth, where do all the new stars around it come from? I was curious to know which story are you using because this does not relate to the one laid down by the ancient people of the Nile. I can't quote on the Dogon people offhand, but from what I know, this isn't in relation with it either. Although I don't know your source, I'm not saying you are wrong because what you state sounds fathomable, but somewhat incomplete. What's the science? Because all science has a basis. This is knowledge that was taught to me by the elders of my tribe. I have since educated myself in the ways of modern sciences and was able to translate the teachings of my ancestors into modern concepts. What tribe? Or maybe what reference material would I be able to look up in order to corroborate this and fit the pieces of the puzzle together? I'm from the tribe called Botswana. Our language is called Setswana or Setswana. As for written references regarding the teachings of our tribe, you will not find any. We are taught orally at first, but this is only basic teaching. The most important teaching is done using only the method of initiation, which is a much more efficient way of passing on knowledge than either oral or written records. As we progress in our discussions, if all goes well, I'll talk about more in detail about the ancient methods of teaching still used today among some tribes. And to the brother who asks what is the basis of this science, as you read the coming posts, you may eventually agree with the following statement. The basis of science is the mind of our ancestors. Now, if this did originate from, as you say, 6,000 years ago, how did they know about electrons and neutrons, et cetera, when no microscope was available at the time? Scientists have found the smallest particle hydrogen, I believe may be wrong, ages since I did the periodic table. I'm not too sure about the analogies and the mathematics in your post either, but will not argue that as I'm no mathematician. You say black people, what do you define as black? Where do the other races come from? Brown, red, yellow, etc. P.S. What's your religion or faith actually called? Thank you. Modern microscopes didn't exist 6,000 years ago, as you say. Our ancestors didn't speak about electrons and atoms in these days. In fact, even today's elders don't speak about such things. I'm the one who translated what I was taught into modern concepts in order to make the discussion clearer. The reason they didn't speak of atoms and electrons is not because they didn't know of such things, but it's because atoms and electrons don't really exist. What modern scientists call electrons are really planets and the nucleus around which they orbit is actually a sun or a star. These planets and their stars are miniature in size because of the phenomenon of mind expansion. What happens is that the universe is created at the beginning and lasts for a certain duration, depending on its purpose. When the purpose is fulfilled, then it comes to an end, but it comes to an end the minds of all the people who live in it, before it comes to an end, the mind of all the people who live in it join together into one mind or one consciousness. This is an expanded state of consciousness. The expansion of the mind or consciousness is so immeasurably large that the entire universe would appear to you as it were a single sphere the size of the earth. All the stars of that universe would appear to be the size of atoms and all the planets the size of electrons. That's how electrons and atoms came into being. They are literally the stars and planets of the previous universe. That universe became a seed 
as it were, for the creation of a new and much larger one. So our ancestors did not call them electrons and atoms. They called them what they really are, which is the planets and star systems of the previous universe that gave birth to ours. I'll answer the other questions next time. Cheers, and we'll be waiting for the rest. Here's the answer to the rest of your questions. Let me describe in a roundabout way what I mean by black people. Besides, black people, there are four non-black races on earth. The Mediterranean or Southern European people, this includes all Hispanics, Portuguese, Latins, and Greek origin people, as well as their kind in the Americas. Middle Easterners, including Arabs, Jews, Persians, non-Black Indians, and such people. The yellow race, the white race, or Caucasians. Those are all the, the original non-Blacks. What is called the red race, or Native Americans, is a mix of the yellow race, called Mongolians, with Black people. It may surprise you to learn that Black people were the original inhabitants of the Americas. The Yellow Race cross the Bering Strait some thousands of years ago and intermix with those original Black inhabitants and produce the so-called Red Race. That description of all the non-Blacks should, I think, make clear what I mean by Black people. On the question of what is my religion, I don't have one. I don't worship anyone because I know there is none to worship. I revere the elders and ancestors of the Black nation who hold in their custody the state of mind called heaven, to which I will ascend when the time comes. I know all this from firsthand experience and not as a belief system. All the religions on earth came about because people could no longer directly experience the higher realities by means of rituals and initiation. There was a time when all Black people openly took part in ritual initiations prior to 6,000 years ago. Since the appearance of the non-Blacks, the initiations were hidden to await the end of the rule of these people. When their end comes, then the ancient system of knowledge will come back into open use. In the meantime, for the past 6,000 years, the non-Black races have invented a spirit god in heaven to replace the direct knowledge hidden from them. But all their gods and spirits, angels and heavens, exist only in the imagination and can be seen quite clearly under the right ritual conditions. Therefore, they need religion to fill their lack, whereas Black people really do not in our natural circumstances. We know who God really is.